For me, I go all the way back to when I was 18 years old. I was, uh, actually when I was 17, I was delivering for a liquor store and they were anxiously waiting my 18th birthday because I'd been brought up with wines. And this was right before the wine boom of the 80s, so 1981. Here I am, 18 year, years old, working as a wine expert, New York City suburbs, and wine spirits. I got into them at an early age, learning to appreciate them. Um, through the years, I stayed off and on in the business, uh, back and forth retail besides going to uh, college, graduate school for completely different things that I don't even do now. Um, so I was a psychotherapist, educator, etc. Uh, and about, oh, I'd say um, 2002, I was totally burnt out at working as a therapist. This was after 9-11, I'd been involved in counseling for that. And I took a break. I said, I want to go back into the food and wine world. And I uh, started consulting, I studied at the French Culinary Institute, and I started focusing on spirits. I started writing about them, I started uh, um, working with different competitions, first doing media stuff as a writer, and then I ended up judging spirits uh, for different competitions. And I fell in love with them. Um, there's, you take something just as simple as the word whiskey, well, there are so many different variations to it and what grains it's made with, how it's aged, the whole process, the distilling process, everything. And I started to get just really focused on this and I said, you know, I'd love to learn how these are made. I looked into what it would take to open up a distillery. Well, five years ago, there's no way, no how, unless you had millions of dollars and you're willing to put several years of your time into it that it could happen. But um, because of 9-11, the ATF, uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, which was a policing force, broke off. Homeland Security took the firearms part off, and then the alcohol and tobacco was set up as what's called now the TTB, the Tax and Trade Bureau. Well, Tax and Trade Bureau, they want money to come in. So once they got used to the fact that they're not a police force anymore, they made it a lot easier, more friendly for distilleries to open. Um, so now instead of it being a multi-year process, a multi-million dollar process, um, Someone can spend twenty-five or fifty thousand dollars and open up a very small boutique distillery, and instead of you know years for the process, you can get the paperwork done in anywhere from six to eight months if you're unlucky. And some people have been really carefully dotting the I's, crossing the T's. I've heard of them being able to get all the paperwork done within less than a week and get it approved. So. I heard about all this and saw where things were going and I moved up here to Maine and I saw a friend of mine, Keith Bodine, down at Sweetgrass uh, uh, Farm Winery and Distillery. I saw his small still, about the same size as this one, and he was producing a fantastic gin. And I'm a gin fanatic, I was one of the first people really writing about gin. And I saw that here he is producing a gin that Paul Picoult's rating it a four out of five. Fantastic stuff that just this past year. Uh, Ray is one of the top 50 spirits in the world, coming out of a little farmhouse where one guy is doing the work all himself. And I said, you know, I can do that. And basically I uh, got together with a winery that was up and running and they wanted to open up a brewery. And I said, you know, brewery, distillery. We teamed up and uh, so that's how I got into the process of opening this, getting this together.